In this video, I want to look at the center of mass for a system of particles. And so that's the important distinction. If I'm looking at a uh, something other than just a single particle, I can look at two sort of distinct categories of systems. One is I call a discrete system, which is a system of individual particles, more than one, or else a continuous system, uh, an extended object that has um, that has some sort of size and volume that I have to worry about that's not made up of individual particles. So this, I'm going to stick with the discrete system. And so let's say we have, uh, we have, instead of just one, we have n particles. So a discrete number of n particles greater than one. Okay, so they have mass, n particles, they have mass, well, m1, m2, dot, dot, m to the n. And they're at positions which we'll call r sub 1, r sub 2, dot, 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 r sub n. So imagine we've assumed some sort of coordinate system here. And we have these particles, one, two, three, four, five, six particles. And then each one of the say, well, let's let's call this so this is M1. No, I don't want to do that many. <laughs> three, etc. And so then there's R1, R2, R3, etc. Okay, so we want to find the center of mass of, of this system of three, four, five, six particles. Okay, so the first thing that we want to define here is the total mass, which I will call capital M, which is the sum of i is equal to 1 to n of all the individual masses. So sum up all the masses, you get the total mass. That's easy enough. And from that, we can now define the center of mass for a system of particles. And that center of mass, which is a vector, so cm for a center of mass, is equal to 1 over the total mass, the sum, i is equal to 1 to capital N, of each individual mass times its position vector. And, well, I'm done. <laughs> That's, that, there it is. That's it. Um, but let's, so... Let's take an example to see uh, how this how this all fits together. Um, the first thing to note here is is that um, this breaks up into components easily enough. So you can do you can uh, make do the sum over all the components instead of trying to say do a geometric sum of all the vectors. So this. Um, the position of the center of mass is equal to uh, 1 over the total mass sum of i is equal to 1 to n of the mass of each object times the x component of each object i hat plus then 1 over the total mass sum i is equal to 1 to capital N mass of each object times the y component of each object j hat I'm going to run out of space here plus then 1 over the total mass sum i is equal to 1 to N mass of each object times the z component of each object and k hat. And so each of these, then this is be the x component of the center of mass, 
the like well, I guess y component of center of mass, z component of center of mass. Call this x component of the center of mass. And so you can go ahead then and solve for the x, y, and z component of the center of mass separately and then put it back as their components uh, of the center of mass to find the final vector. Okay, so, so there's, break it up into components. Let's now do a uh, short example. Imagine I have uh, three masses sort of on uh, corners of a cube, each four meters apart. This has a, uh, a mass of three kilograms. This one has a mass of two kilograms, and this one has a mass of five kilograms. And I want to know is, where is the center of mass of this system? All right. So first, we have to come up with a coordinate system because it's the like center of mass is a position vector and so a position vector is measured relative to a coordinate system. Uh, I, I'm going to put my origin here at the two kilogram mass. I'm going to call uh, x in that direction and uh, y going up and recall I noted that there are four, these are four meters apart I said so that means there's four meters and there is four meters. And this will allow me to write now the position vectors for each of my masses. So I have uh, the position vector for mass, for the two kilogram mass, which I'll call R2. That's zero, it's at the origin. The position vector for the five kilogram mass, which I'll call R sub five, that is equal to uh, four meters I hat. I'm I'm all in meters and kilograms SI units, so I'm, I'm going to avoid having to write units everywhere. And then my uh, position vector for my three kilogram mass is then going to be for J hat. Okay, that's good. Um, I have my position vectors now. The other thing I need is my total mass, which is the sum of all my individual masses, which is ten kilograms. Okay, so now I can go ahead and find these individual sums of all the components. I, I could do, in fact, just do the vectors themselves, but uh, we'll go ahead and do, do the components. And so the x component of the center of mass then is the 1 over the total mass sum 1 to n mass uh, of i x of i well um so okay fine fine let's just do it we have the two kilogram mass which is two times its component which is zero plus the five kilogram mass plus x uh, its x component which is four plus the three kilogram mass times its x component, which is also zero. The three kilogram mass is only along the y-axis. And so the x component then is equal to, these are zero, that's 20, divided by the total mass, which is 10. Um, and the these, you know, two, this is kilograms, these are in meters. So each of these, this 20 has units of kilograms, meters. Uh, the total mass has units of kilograms, so the result has a units of meters, which is right. And so the x uh, coordinate of the center of mass is 2 meters. Okay, I'm sick of green already. Let's do the y center of mass, which is equal to 1 over the total m, and then the same sum again for the y coordinate, which is the uh, 2 kilogram mass, which is 2 times its y component, which is 0 plus the five kilograms mass times its y component, which is also zero, plus the three kilogram mass times its y component, which is four. Only R3 has a y component. So zero, zero. So this is 12 over 10. Again, kilograms, meters over uh, kilograms. Leads me to six-fifths 
meters. So the vector of the center of mass is equal to 2 in the x direction plus uh, 6 fifths, I guess that's 1.2 in the j direction, the y hat, uh, uh, j hat in the y direction, and this is in meters. There is the vector of the center of mass. Well, where does that? It, where is that on our system? And so if we go up here, there's two, three, and one, kind of two meters, three and one. So R um, has x component of two, y component of one point two. So it is about right here, and so R of the center of mass looks like this, R center of mass. And so you can see it's not perfectly symmetrical between the objects. It's weighted towards the object of the heavier mass. It also is does not have the magnitude up to four meters because it's weighted uh, towards the origin with the two um, kilogram mass as well. And so it becomes the, the weighted sum, weighted by the masses of the positions of the various objects.